Welcome, everybody, to a new episode of Daydream Legend. Happy Martin Luther King Day. It's Martin Luther King Day morning. It's a beautiful freezing day out in New Jersey, and my New York Giants got past the wild card game and are moving on in the playoffs for the first time in 10 years. And no, this isn't a sports podcast. I just want to say how fun it was to watch them do this despite the awful officiating and that awful roughing the passer call towards the end of the game. They tried stealing it from the Giants, but they won anyway. Did you see my brain right there trying to find a word that I thought I had, but I didn't? I went, and then I had to go fish for another word. I'm thinking I need to get some alpha brain or something. There's something with my aging where I just can't get to words quick enough. I don't know if it's lack of sleep, whatever it is, but I have to rectify it before. uh... I swear to God, this isn't a bit I'm doing right now. My mind just went blank. This is this is the this is the universe conspiring against me. Be like, oh, you're going to make fun of your biology. So now you're not going to know what to say next. So that wasn't planned. But anyway, happy Martin Luther King Day. Um, I've had no gigs because uh, it's just January has been dead this week. And then through February and into March, I'm starting to have more gigs. So I have no stories of shows or anything. I just kind of been lounging around doing some writing and uh but writing comedy doesn't mean anything until you put in front of the audience so i think i have some good jokes that i came up with but we will not find out until next friday or this coming friday and see if they bomb or not but uh i'll report back and let you know if it sucks which it probably will it is that's one of the most amazing things about it is that you could really think you have some gold and then you just stand in front of an audience and they're just like no and it's weird. The moment they tell you no, you now see what's wrong with it. You're like, yeah, what was I thinking? That was not even a full thought that I was trying to give them. But anyway, let's get to some news stories. I see That seems to be like the fun way to do this now. People send me weird news stories and we're just going to talk about them. Um, especially if I have no weird stories from my personal life. And now the news for Martin Luther King Day with this headline that I saw before I went to bed last night. Woke $10 million MLK quote penis statue insults black community. Even some kin of Coretta Scott King hate the new $10 million sculpture just dedicated to her and her iconic civil rights leader husband in Boston with a cousin claiming it looks like a penis. And it does. It... The massive bronze piece titled The Embrace features two sets of arms holding each other, an interpretation of the classic photo of Coretta and her hubby, Martin Luther King, hugging after he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. The mainstream media was reporting on it like it was all beautiful because they were told they had to say it, she said. But then when it came out, a little boy pointed out, that's a penis. And everyone was like, yo, that's a big old dong, man. If you had shown that statue to anyone in the hood, they would have been like, no, absolutely not. And I have to agree. I just have no idea what they were thinking with this. It it's either looks like an arm holding a big penis or a big turd. These are one of those things where you're like, this this couldn't have been an, it, this couldn't have been intentional. You had to believe people in their heart that this couldn't have been intentional. But then you could be a conspiracy mind and be like, did they mean for this to have multiple looks? I mean, how could an artist, first off, okay, we'll just say as an artist, like sometimes, I hate to use the word artist, I'll just say comedian. Um, sometimes you you make something, you write something, then you show it to a friend, they tell you, no, nah, that stinks. You tell me, or it's great. So you're telling me this artist who I'm sure has artist friends and people he trusts with his designs, because before you make a big bronze statue like this, you're going to have a drawing of it. Not one person said, do you think it looks like a penis? Do you think it looks a little odd? And then the person went, I mean, yeah, it's really, if you look at it, there's one angle really looks like it. Um, And then this other angle looks like like a, like someone is like ashamed, like they're holding their head 
in shame. It's just like a really poorly designed statue. And I am totally with everyone who feels insulted by this. Because you can look at it. At one angle, it looks like a penis. One angle, it looks like a guy having his head in his hand. Like, oh, no. And then this other angle, on quick look, looks like somebody shoving their head into the into a hole. But hole possibly or maybe that's just my mind i don't know (laughs) but uh i'm gonna go with now the question is did the person realize this or was this also like one of those like playing like did, did the person realize this and put it out anyway was it intended to be insulting or is this person and everyone in their life the biggest idiots in the world i'm gonna go with my personal opinion they knew they did it anyway hoping that it wouldn't be seen that way which is i don't know which is worse knowing that it's gonna look like a penis or a turd or or a man putting his head in his hands or in a, in a in a butthole. It's there's no good answers for this. I just think they're gonna have to take it down or at least add something to it to make it not. Cl- you see, like when you look at it from this angle, with just the hands holding, you can see it. But this one, that that's a penis. This is definitely hands in the head. And this, maybe it's just me, but uh, it looks like someone sh- like pulling their head into a into a hole. Or, all right, that's probably just me. Yeah, the question is why there's no heads. Like Martin Luther King is known, like Martin Luther King's face is well known. So I don't know why the bronze statue couldn't at least include his head. If not his wife, okay, him and his wife's head. But if you wanted to leave only one head, maybe to save money. I don't know what the answer is. This is very strange. Yeah, the problem is you don't know. Like on first look of any piece of art, you should know what it is. You don't know what that is. If you have to walk up to the the statue and read something to know what it is, that especially if it's meant to represent a person that's not a good statue well hank willis thomas is the artist and he is a black man so i there's no way this was on purpose this is not what he wanted to be famous for if you look at this angle it looks like hands on the like the upper thigh doing something naughty this poor artist, Hank Willis Thomas, if you didn't intend for all this to be seen, I feel you just, this was a bad moment for you, man. And I kind of feel for you. Because I don't think you did this on purpose, but man, what a, what a mess up. This, there's so much you can get out of this statue, and none of which is Martin Luther King. <laughs> Scientific studies suggest Lucky Charms may be healthier than eggs, cheese, or steak. See that? You got to trust science. Researchers at Tufts University in Boston released a new highly controversial system for ranking foods based on their nutrient content. In the new ranking, on a scale of 1 to 100, Cheerios earned healthfulness score of 95 and Lucky Charms 60, while a fried egg was 29, cheddar cheese 28, and ground beef just 26. There you go. That's it. Lucky, you should be eating Lucky Charms more than eggs. It's just, it's, it's healthier. Dr. Brett Scher, Diet Doctor Medical's director, notes the researchers created a new rating system because they felt other nutrient profiling systems did not do good enough job advising people what to eat, and they wanted to create a better one. All right, I, I find this to be funny, but th- this is definitely probably a research done by general mills because uh, people are starting to eat better like just tell them that lucky charms is good for you do you believe money is being put towards this type of research to to even test lucky charms like who would look at lucky charms and nobody eats lucky charms because it's healthy it's because it tastes good and there's there can't be a redeeming quality 
but we're not going to even get into it because I trust science and that's it. So people eat your lucky charms. Here's one that came by. A woman who married her duvet says it's the most intimate relationship of her life. Oh, humans, we are just so bored in life. Pascal Selleck appeared on British Morning Talk Show this morning to talk about her marriage to her duvet. We're always being told that we don't get enough sleep and that we should be spending more time in bed. Well, our next guest has taken it one step further because she's decided to marry her duvet. Pascal Selleck describes her feelings towards her duvet as uh, the most intimate and reliable relationship that she's ever had. She's here now with her wedding planner, Anna, and the duvet-to-be. <laughs> uh, so, good morning. <laughs> good um, morning. So, uh, and as we would uh, start any of these interviews, uh, when did you first meet your duvet? Oh, I met my duvet a long, long time ago. We always knew yeah. it was going to be love. It was love at first sight, I think. What is it about, about, about this duvet? I mean, you must have had other duvets before. I you? had other duvets before, but yeah. I always been loyal to this one. But this one. duvet was the this one. This is special. Yeah. So, so what is it? Just sort of describe the relationship that you have with the duvet and what, and what it means to you. But the duvet means, basically, it gives me warm comfort. It's always there for me in time of sadness, in time yeah. of happiness. Of course it does. It's a duvet. That's what they all do. She went on to say her boyfriend Johnny completely understands her relationship with Blanket, claiming he's not jealous of my duvet. In fact, he's very proud of me. Of course he's not jealous of you. Listen, man. First off, Johnny needs to really get some self-esteem. If your girl says she's in love with a duvet, you gotta go. You have to go. I mean, that is... Cr and of course, you're not going to be jealous. Who'd be jealous of a duvet? If you are jealous of a duvet, then you also have serious problems. But I also think you're, I don't know, maybe, maybe he, Johnny doesn't like her anymore. And he's like, listen, I think she's about to lose her mind and like throw herself off a bridge, possibly. So uh, maybe I can get out of this if I just support her duvet love. Like what? You think when Johnny gets mad at her, he like would spill something on a duvet, and I wonder what her reaction would be. Don't touch my husband! Don't hurt my husband! Yeah, is it a husband or a boyfriend? Don't! I want to see, I wish I knew what the duvet's name was. Let me Google that. According to the wedding register, the duvet's name is Duvet Tentog. Duvet, the number 10 with T-O-G after. I don't know what that means. The duvet was draped over a chair when guests arrived at the wedding. Pascal cuddled her duvet for the first dance to Dido's Thank You, performed by a local band. There were also speeches. And that's where we're at as a people. Last week, there was a guy in a relationship with a doll. This week, a woman I found out had married her duvet. And I think they've been married now for about three years, maybe four. Humans are just so weird. This is what scares me. I feel like this is why the end of the world's going to come, because... We're just done. We're, we're bored. We're marrying duvets. To, even if it's to make a point. I don't know. Marrying your duvet? All right, here's one that really has been in the news. Is uh, Tennessee cops, including married female officer, fired after repeated wild sex romps. A small Tennessee police station has been rocked by allegations of wild sexual misconduct after a married female officer allegedly had steamy romps with six male officers, including illicit on-duty liaison. Officer Megan Hall and her fellow law officers engaged in wild sexcapades that included sending dirty pictures, taking her top off at Girls Gone Wild hot tub party, and even having oral sex with two officers at the La Verge, Tennessee Police Station. The steamy shenanigans in which Hall allegedly bragged about the size of one partner's genitals and claimed to be in an open marriage not only led to Hall to being canned, but led to the firings of all the officers. Two officers who allegedly had romps with her kept their jobs but wound up suspended. They took pla the, the trysts took place at hotels, parties, and at other officers' houses and on a boat while Hall was also accused of performing oral sex on two of the officers while on duty at the police station. So that's probably why she got fired because it was at the police station. Cause if you're in your private life having sexual romps with your coworkers, I mean, is that really, I mean, it was consensual. I don't know. I guess everything's, everything's murky these days, I guess with workers and stuff, though, most people meet at work. Apparently it's not good to have sex with people you work with, which we've probably all learned through our lives. 
don't crap where you sleep. Officials began to look into the swinging personal lives of the Amherst officers when the mayor received a tip that Hall was sleeping with several fellow cops and had a threesome with uh, one of the other cops and his wife. All right. Bottom line, the person who tipped off was either not getting in on the action or the wife of... I I bet the person who tipped it was a other fellow police officer who couldn't get in on this. So he's like, if I can't get some, you can't get some. And I kind of feel bad for this. Actually, I do feel very bad for this female officer because this is her personal life. There's another headline saying her husband is sticking by her. That's a strong man. It's one thing if you get, you know, catch your wife having an affair and you can get through that. Maybe, you know, whatever. Somehow, I don't think I could, you know, in the past when people have cheated on me, it was just definitely over. Um, But to find out there was romps on boats and, you know, giving oral to multiple people at the office. I mean, that's a that guy is either a saint or she's his beard and they have a uh, an understanding. Maybe he's hanging out with some people at his work. They may have an open marriage. I just feel awful for this woman because she did whatever she wanted to with her life as far as these sex romps, but the amount of memes that are going on about her. Uh, let me see if I can find some. Like this one headline, married cop fired for allowing entire police department to run several high-speed trains on her. That's not nice. When you hear everybody in the department is getting together for a Monday Night Raw. Oof. The car fact says it's a one owner. The car. Ugh, awful. I can't do this. I was going to show some of these memes, but I can't because I kind of feel bad for this uh, officer. Um... I don't know. I'm, I'm torn on this. I understand why people why why people got fired because I guess you can't have sex at work. But I, I guess I don't understand um, getting fired for having sex with people at work if it's consensual, even if it is, you know, orgies. And I guess I just don't understand. You know, someone can can someone explain it to me because it, it to me it just seems like consenting adults doing what they have to do or doing what they want to do, not what they have to do. It's not like I have to do this. Okay, we're going to do a Mug Shorty of the Week. I haven't done it in a while. I'm not going to do it every week, so I'm just going to, I guess we'll just call it Mug Shorty of this week. I'm thinking about doing this maybe with a guest. Um, I've been getting a lot of flack on, um, was it TikTok, saying this is very misogynistic, and and it like, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to beauty, and it's like, listen, this is all about what I find attractive. Um, I'll, I'll give you this. I don't... I, I don't need to make fun of people's looks because I don't look that great either. So we'll just go with who I think's prettier and it doesn't. And I'll keep my thoughts about why they're prettier to myself because apparently strangers can't handle a little bit like this that's just fun. And I'm tired of getting messages. So let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. In order of who I think's prettier. And now the game is who I think's prettier is probably has the worst crime. And I don't know what their crimes yet. I'm just going based on their pictures. So if you're listening to the audio podcast, you got to go over to YouTube to see these pictures. Okay. I'm going to go. <clears throat> now this is prettiest. Prettiest will be number one. So one to six. So the prettiest I think to me is number one. Then I'm going to go, I'm going one, four, two, three, five, six. One, four, two, three, five, six. Now we're going to go see who's the worst. We're going to go to the least first. We're going to start with six. One, two, three. No, one, four, three. No, one, four, two. Okay, so here's number six. Those, sh- okay, number six. DUI and assault. Okay, it's bad, but we'll see. So we're gonna go to five. Fraud scammed over four hundred thousand on GoFundMe. Okay, 
We're going to go to three. Possession of a controlled dangerous substance. Okay, we're going to go to two. Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. See, we're getting there. We're getting there. Two. Injury to personal property. Mm. All right. So, number one. Let's see what she did. This may fall apart on me. Assault was kicked out of a bar, later returned to get in the bouncer's face, hitting him with a bottle on his chest multiple times till the bouncer was able to get her to the ground where she bit his arm. Yes! I think that is the craziest one here. See? My theory, who I think, this is about me now. Don't come at me. You know, you could do your own little judging on who's pretty or not, but to me, I think she's the worst. Though... Number three, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. See, I wish I knew what the deadly weapon was, but this one is an assault as well. And all right, it could it could have fallen apart. Three could, have, but th three's a high one too. You know what I'm saying? So between one and three, you got that's a debate. But she did uh, assault a uh, bouncer and bite him while on the ground, which is pretty vicious. An aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself. I think I think the theory still is intact because the the girl with the deadly weapon was number three, which is high on my list. So, one and three were the worst, and one she bit a guy. So mug shorty of this week is number one for assault and biting the bouncer. With a runner-up of number three with assault with a deadly weapon. So it is true. Who I find attractive is always the worst criminal. All good things must come to an end. All right, guys, that's it for this week's podcast. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, just doing these fun news stories. Um, people sent me more of them, but I just didn't have time to get to them because I want to keep these podcasts short. But... uh. I'll bring back some next week that I didn't get to. Uh, if you want to call, we still have the call-in number. Uh, people stop calling in, which is fine. I don't care. Um, but yeah, call and ask any questions you want. Uh, number is 973-908-8477. If you got weird news stories or something funny that you see on the internet, uh, send it to me on my Instagram at Joe Fernandez, Facebook, or my website, Joe at JoeFernandez.net. Um, I just put up a bunch of dates on there, so please go, buy tickets, come see me live. More dates are coming in. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, and if you're on the YouTube channel, please subscribe on the audio side. Um, I appreciate you guys coming this week, and I'll see you next week.